Hi, welcome back. In this video, we'll discuss about the API LAD connectivity in Mule. So before starting this API LAD connectivity, we'll give you some walkthrough about the structure of the APIs we are, how we are basically calling the APIs. So right now we are basically designing our APIs in Mule. So we'll have one endpoint over here and then we have orchestration which basically have the logic to get the data. So let's say this is my API and uh, I have one system over here. Let's say this is my database system and we are creating API to call the database system and to fetch the database from database data basically from the database system. Now who will call those APIs? So let's say you are basically creating an API for the front end. Let's say there is an order API which will from the front end will click on the order and which gives us the order status from the database. So we'll have one user over here or you can see the front end or user. This user basically calls this API and this API will call the database and after fetching the database detail this will data will send response to this API and this API will send response to the user or the front end. So this is one process we, need, we are following currently. So now we will discuss about the API LED connectivity how this basically work. So let's take a scenario where we have three systems. One system we have SAP system. Inside this we have all the inventory details. Inventory details. So we are basically considering one order. Let's say we are considering the Amazon system. Okay. So we have an inventory details inside this SAP system. And then we have one more system for the user. So let's say this system is SFDC that is Salesforce which is used to insert or you can say the retrieve data for the customer endpoint. So we have customer data inside this. Then we have third system. You can say let's say the database system. Inside this database system we have order details of that particular orders. Okay, so we have these three systems right now. One is Salesforce, one is database, and another is SAP. SAP contains the inventory detail. So previously, before this API LED connectivity, how we need to do so? Let's say we'll have this as an you can say my API, or you can say the organization inside this organization. We'll have one API which takes the customer data. So I will just create like this. So this takes the so this system calls my SAP system to fetch the customer data. Sorry, not SAP. SFDC system to fetch the customer data. And few of the data we have in inventory. So will this system will call the inventory data to fetch the inventory data. And then you can say here we have customer inventory data okay let's we'll have one more system which is basically calling the check the database which checks the status or the last order you can say status and then we'll have one application more say orders so will this status will call check data from this database and then we this order will also check the data from this database so let's say we got a requirement in future in which we'll need to develop one more. We have one more system. Let's say I developed the application, mobile application. I need to fetch the data from here and I need to fetch the small amount of data, not the whole data. So I need to create one more API here. This API will call this data and we'll create one more API over here. This will call this SAP system to fetch the customer detail. Okay, now after doing this, as you can see, we are doing the same thing over here. Just this is for the mobile application. This is for the Windows application or you can say the desktop application. 
so there is a redundant of code and if someone want to use this particular api they cannot use this because this uh, things are hard coded for these particular systems now here we have the api led connectivity now we will see how this problem can be resolved using the api led connectivity so we will have the similar three systems over here one will be sap which contains inventory data then we have the salesforce which contains the customer data crm data you can say and then we have one database which contains the order data so the main problem with the previous approach was we are not able to reuse our api in this approach we will try to reuse our apis okay so these are my basically you can say the systems okay so we'll have so there is one layer that i'll just show you so we have this layer okay so there in every company there is one core team which basically develops or interact with our core systems okay so if you want to insert update delete anything on the sap salesforce or database we'll have one core team which basically creates their api so we'll have one let's say so here we'll have one system api or you can say the sap api which interacts with the sap system this takes the data from the sap system or to insert the data into the sap system we'll have one sap system api here we'll have the salesforce that is sfdc you can say api this interact with the salesforce system then we'll have one more for the database we'll have one you can say db api so these are basically interacting with my systems so these apis are known as system apis here we'll not add any logic this are basically generic apis you can say any organ inside our organization any business unit can use this so let's we have business unit for called the customer business unit so they can use this data from the SFDP and SFDC and SAP APIs. We'll have the we'll have some, let's say some analytics team who wants to get the order status. We can they can use basically this DB API to interact with the database. Okay, so here we'll have only the interaction with the third party that is our systems. Okay, then we'll have one more layer over here and uh, this layer basically will have few more apis let's say i want to interact with the salesforce and sap system so for that we'll have the aggregate data aggregate aggregate customer information info so what i will do i will not directly call the salesforce and sap i will call this sap api and i will call this salesforce api to get the data from the sap and salesforce system simultaneously okay so we got this so these are the cu aggregate customer ap info api okay and then let's say there's one more api which takes the data from this customer info as well as from the database so we can call this api get the data from the customer and we can call this api and here i can write order details or you can say the order status okay so we will have order details and order status over here so here in this layer we are basically adding the process so these are basically we are adding the business logic so these are known as the process api okay so after this process api We'll have one more layer over here. Let's say you are basically calling these APIs from different front ends. It can be your web UI or it can be your mobile systems. Sorry, it can be your mobile systems. So let's say I'll write as mobile API. So we have different experience APIs. So these are basically known as experience API because of 
we have different experience in web UI we have different experience and then in mobile we have different experience so according to the experience we need to define these API so what is the use of this so basically whenever we log in into any of the e-commerce website then for, let's say take an example of the Amazon we go to the amazon.com we'll get a UI and uh, also we'll see the details of that particular product and the same product if we'll try to see in a mobile application of the Amazon then there's a prob probability that we'll get a fewer data as compared to a web UI because in web website we'll have the whole full 15 inch screen so I can see a more data so these are mobile API basically used when we want to send a fewer amount of data to the user or a different type of data or you can say different experience so these are basically known as experience api okay so these are basically system api process api and experience api and these are our systems so let's take one more scenario in which you are basically exposing your api this process api to the third party customers so let's say you have you are basically dealing with the four customers so right now i will delete all these stuff and uh, so let's say we'll have three customers c1 c2 and c3 okay so we are exposing these apply these apis to these users or you can say the customers so let's say the requirement for c1 and c2 is same so this c1 and c2 will connect with the apis directly okay the c3 requirement is different so what we'll do we'll create requirement for the c3 and then we'll need to add one more api over here and this will the c3 customer can call my api over here and over here so in this way we are basically exposing these apis to c1 and c2 so what is the best way to do it we will not use this directly so what we'll do we'll create two apis basically over here one for the same customers so customer one c1 and c2 will call c1 and c2 will basically call this okay. or i will give the name as uh, you can say requirement one okay and there's one more customer that is c3 will have requirement sorry will have requirement two okay so what we're gonna do is we're gonna expose this re requirement one to these customers so customer can, can call this api and this customer can call this api and these requests will directly call this and this api okay now we have customer three for the customer three the requirement is different so we have requirement two so for that we'll create a separate api and uh, customer 3 call this api and this api requirement 2 api will call the process api so these are also known as you can say experience api so in this way we can implement the api that connectivity and the main advantage is we are basically reusing our api if let's say our customer 4 is coming and he, he wants some different so just need to create one more API over here this can this API will directly call this process API and process API will call system API system API will fetch the data and then give it back to the customer 4 so system APIs we can use across the organization for different unit business units so where's the analytics units I can use or I can use for the data can say data warehouse unit can use these APIs or any other business unit can basically use these API and these API will be reusable format okay so hope you understand this API-led connectivity that's it for this video see you next video thank you